Hi, my name is Alfonso Hau, and in this presentation, I'd like to talk to you about why openness will benefit the University of Minnesota. One of my first experiences with online distance learning came from benefiting from the OpenCourseWare MIT initiative that they started in 2001 that has grown since the OpenCourseWare Consortium, including many more universities. But openness includes much more than the OpenCourseWare Consortium. Openness started with the open source movement, and it has since included open policy, open hardware, open textbooks, open access, open data. And this is similar to the Techium by Kevin Kelly that he argues that technology is moving us forward in a direction and there's many different technology innovations that can all be grouped together. I think openness itself should also be considered as a whole as well. And openness has impacted the transfer and diffusion of knowledge worldwide. Various courses around openness have been taught online by David Wiley, Wayne McIntosh, George Siemens, Stephen Downs. They have benefited from the use of Creative Commons licenses, Lawrence Lassig works, and Openness as a course hasn't been taught at the University of Minnesota, but I think we should teach a course in openness at the University of Minnesota. By increasing openness, millions of students that previously may not have access to high quality educational resources will have access to them in the future, and it will benefit millions of students worldwide. UNESCO has promoted openness by coining the term Open Educational Resources in 2002, and since having the 2012 Paris OER Declaration. When we think of openness, think of Wikipedia. Wikipedia is the most successful open site, and it has displaced Encarta after 270 years and benefited millions of students and researchers. As people use Wikipedia at the beginning of a study, to me, the University of Minnesota mission of our recent service are well embodied within the concept of openness when we think of providing access, solving community problems, and bringing the expertise of the university to the state, the nation, and the world, those that are embodied in openness. And one of the ways the university can help the state is by publishing in open access journals. By publishing in open access journals, individuals working in NGOs and other, and just citizens can benefit from accessing the knowledge that sometimes have been already paid by taxpayer funds. And uh, open access has grown quickly. Over the last 10 years, a tenfold growth, pretty much, in open access publications. And many of them can be found through the directory of open access journals. The University of Minnesota has promoted open access through Open Access Week, and the libraries have argued for an open access publishing fund so that scholars in some journals that require uh, payment at the beginning for the article to be published uh, for that payment to be covered in those cases. But many open access journals don't require that payment. The reason for this is that the cost of setting up a journal have in many ways gone down. I am part of a student-run journal, Reconsidering Development, that we have very few operating costs. And we are able to publish and help students publish and also provide students the experience of managing and editing a journal um, at a very low cost. I am one of the web editors for Reconsidering Development. Another way openness is transforming education is to open textbooks. Open textbooks benefit both online courses and traditional courses. Open textbooks usually have created common licenses which allow them to be easily modified. Uh, we need to take into account that textbooks have gone prices up four times faster than inflation and seven out of ten students do not necessarily buy all their textbooks and is saving sometimes of hundreds of dollars. A student spends over a thousand dollars a year in textbooks. University of Minnesota proudly joined the open textbook movement by creating the open textbook catalog. David Ernst at the College of Education has created a catalog so textbooks could be easily found and easily reviewed by faculty members and in that way make sure that they have the quality that academics require within their courses and at the same time provide students a book that is much cheaper. One of the oldest open initiatives that changed online and distance learning and influenced learning worldwide was the OpenCourseWare Consortium starting with MIT OpenCourseWare but then sponsored by many universities including the African British University, the China Open Resource for Education and many other institutions that have allowed millions of students to benefit from this open content online. Recently, instead of simply providing knowledge through OpenCourseWare, they're creating massive open online courses that can be network-based, such as connectivist courses, task-based, or content-based, and they're increasingly a hot topic within academia. It's how to have these massive online courses that thousands of people can benefit starting with Sebastian Tron's artificial intelligence course and 200,000 students, two smaller MOOCs. The University of Minnesota doesn't yet have MOOCs, but they're considering them. There's a group right now that is studying one a, a MOOC in uh, Future of Education, and they're discussing some of the benefits, some of the cons, and we could wonder, you know, should there be a pilot that includes various of the best courses of the University of Minnesota network, and they're available online for the rest of the state and the world. Other than whole courses, but also very, very influential are open videos. There are now over 72 hours of video published every minute to YouTube, and some videos such as Ken Robinson's TED Talk have reached over 13 million people, and they can explain ideas in a very concise way. This has really helped and is influencing online and distance learning. It's hard today to find courses that don't include online videos, 
and this video can help diffuse ideas that are within the University of Minnesota. GAPSA is partnering with TEDx right now, so seeing how we can help grad students to be able to get their ideas also out through the same medium. Uh, iTunes U has great conversations as well, and I mean, videos can be posted in YouTube. Increasingly, we have to see how we can diffuse knowledge and ideas in a concise manner through video. This leads us to open innovation. When we think of the tower, it used to collect all the knowledge, but now it can be diffused through the informatic cloud. Richard and Katz, through Evocos, published a book about that phenomena, and Stephen Johnson has argued that the increased connection leads to innovation, which has also shown by Chris Anderson as part of a discussion that he had of regarding how online video can help improve or increase the rate of innovation. We think of open innovation at the University of Minnesota. We're doing some of that. Design thinking, the culture design had a session of design thinking around higher ed, but we could do more. We can increase connection between the silos. We can break those silos down and connect ideas across departments to the greater benefit of society. And finally, we have open government, which is closely linked to open policy. We need to elect policies that allow or increase for transparency and communication. We all saw what happened at the Arab Spring, and that happened partly because of the increased connection that we have through Twitter and other social media. GitHub has also allowed for laws now to be discussed in a, in a sort of open source format, which Ahiri is another great example of open government. At the University of Minnesota, there's increased use of social media, which is increased transparency and some level of access, but not the access to where we include people or invite people to comment more openly in, in policy. Um, and GAPSA is trying to promote this through sharing Google Docs, for example, of its policies so that people can discuss them online before the main meetings or the General Assembly. In conclusion, the University of Minnesota would benefit for greatest openness to change, to consider some of these alternatives, and think of how they can impact education, the transfer of knowledge, see where we can remain sustainable or increase the sustainability by also increasing our benefits to the community, society, and everybody as a whole.